Jackie Ballheis from Clomp and Stampers. Today, I have a quick and easy card to share with you using the Little Monkey Stamp Set. Super cute for kids and adults, males, female, anybody. It's just, we'll put a smile on anyone's face. Now, as we make this card today, I have some punching tips to share with you and also some tips for coloring with Stampin' Blends. It is my favorite way to color and I'm gonna give you tips so that you can see how easy it is. As always, my card is quick and easy. I love to share quick and easy cards that are perfect that anybody can make them. So whether you're a brand new stamper or you've been maybe card making for a long time, hopefully you'll like the idea and the tips that I share today and you can see how fun and easy card making is. So let's flip the camera down and let's get to work. The stamp set we're using today, like I said, is called Little Monkey and it has a coordinating punch. So that makes card making so easy. You don't have to do all that fussy cutting and it's gonna cut out one of the monkeys along with a heart and a few other pieces of it. So lots of tips for you today. So I think we're gonna start out by stamping our, our main focal point image. And with this, we are using the Memento Black. This is my standard black, I use it if I'm just stamping something in black, but especially you're going to want to use this if you're coloring with Stampin' Blends, which is what we're going to do today. And then you also want to make sure you're using the basic white, either the thick or the regular. I usually use regular um, for your cardstock because between that cardstock, the memento, and your blends, that's how you're going to, going to get that great coloring that I know we all love to, to be able to get. So we're gonna start out here and we are gonna just go ahead and put one of the branches, let's put it about right there. And then I think we're gonna just stick in another little piece up here so we can make our little tree a little bit fuller. Then down at the bottom, okay, what we're creating here is this kind of a little jungle for, for our monkeys to hang out in. So we'll stamp a couple of those leaves and then let's see if we got room here for a couple of these. There's one and there's two. So here's our tree, our monkeys can swing through it and then we've got some foliage down here on the bottom. Now let's set that aside and let's do all of our stamping first. Because then I, don't, I can move the black pad and not risk sticking something in it. Now I have a piece of the pecan pie here and what I'm going to do is stamp two monkeys onto the colored cardstock. Now before I stamp them, I wanna look at my punch because you can see we've got several images. And if you're like me, you'll just stamp on the paper, you'll go to punch it, and you'll go, shoot, it won't fit. So I always look at my punch first. I even stick cardstock in there sometimes to see it better. And I look to see where my monkey is. So you can see it's like he's facing, you know, standing up, facing forward, right up towards the top. And he's at the top of that punch. So I know if I stamp him, down here in the bottom, you know, head up, feet down, he will fit into my punch here to punch him out. And so we'll just stick him in there, line him up. I don't wanna put my head right over because I want you to be able to see, and then punch. Now I will tell you, sometimes you gotta use a little muscle, um, especially on these punches that have quite a few pieces that they're punching out. So I'll show you another little tip for doing that. Let's stamp and cut out one more of them. Um, if you have a hard time with these punches, lay it down on the table, okay, get it lined up, and I kind of line it up and put a little pressure enough to hold that cardstock there so it's not going anywhere, and then I use both hands that way instead of holding it. That'll just make it easier to punch if you, if you struggle with it. So there we've got two monkeys. Now I'm gonna take a piece of, I believe this is petal pink. And that reminds me to tell you, there is a link in the description of this video that will take you to my blog post. And over there, I'll list all the supplies that I'm using, as well as I'll have pictures of the card I'm making and a few other ones. Um, and you'll get all the details on this card. Sizes is most important. I always put the recipe for all the sizes I'm using. Now I'm talking and stamping and I realize I don't like how that monkey stamped. There we go. See, I didn't get enough black on that one. Now for this one, on our punch right here, you'll see, and I don't know if you got a glare, this piece right here will cut out only, um, only the face part. See it lined up down there at the bottom? And again, I, I had to make sure that where I stamped on my cardstock, I was able to punch it out. 
Now, let's see if I maybe didn't lose them. The other thing that when we punch that, we will get a couple, well, let's see. Now, nah, we'll just save that one. Um, you, this punch also has a couple of the insides of the ears. And sometimes I can save them from when I punch these pieces. And then sometimes I just go ahead and punch a few extras here. Because with this, I feel like I get pieces flying everywhere. So let's see. Actually, there's one, two, th three, two. There you go. Four ears, two faces. And I think that is all that we need to punch out. So let's put him together so we don't lose all these pieces. And what I'm going to do is use some dimensionals. I think I can put two on the face. So with our monkey, we are not coloring him. We're just using that colored cardstock. And then we'll use our Stampin' Blends to color our tree and our leaves. Now, when I'm done here, I have some other samples to share with you. And I'll show how I, on one of them, I color the monkey with Stampin' Blends as well. So that's what's kind of fun about this. You can, you know, play around and, and do it any way that you want to. Now, we need to glue on these little tiny ears. I found the best way is to use this little, um, what, do you, what do you call it? I want to say pliers, that's not it. Oh my gosh. Clipper. We'll just call it a clippy thing. And, oh, I got a glue bubble there. Let's see. Um, this comes along with the embossing kit. And so it's just a handy little thing to hold. And then it's, it's one where it's tight when you're um, not pinching it. And then when you pinch it, it opens up. So what I do is I just place my ear, ear there, pinch it, pull it out, and there's our, our little ear. So let's go ahead and stick all of these on there. You'll see, isn't he just kind of cute as he's coming to life? I'm saying he. Hmm, maybe it's a girl. We don't know, right? <laughs> so let's stick that one down there. I like using the liquid adhesive, and part of it's because you can kind of slide it around to get it right where you want it. So there is that one. And then let's see, we got two more little ears here. And then we're gonna switch gears a bit and we are gonna talk about coloring and how to color with Stampin' Blends. Um, and then like I said, don't forget the description in the video and that will take you over to my website and there'll be a post with all the details on these cards. There'll be also the catalog if you would like to request one or just download it to view it. Um, plus all kinds of other fun stuff. And then make sure you sign up for my email newsletter, which you can do over on the website as well. And I send out an email usually just once a week and it's always got downloadable project tutorials. And those are always things that I don't share here on YouTube or on my blog. So make sure to sign up for that. Coloring, are we ready? Now I've got granny apple green and pecan pie. Um, I wanted to kind of match the pecan pie with the monkeys. Now with Stampin' Blends, we've got a light and a dark. And I'm gonna pull both caps off this one. And you'll see there's the smaller bullet tip and then there's the more brush tip. Depending on the size of the image, will kind of determine which one you want. I tend to use that bullet tip more, and for sure on this, because this is pretty small. And I'm gonna be honest, there is not a right or a wrong way to color. Um, some people like to do dark first and then light, and some like to do light and then dark, which is me. So what I like to do is I will fill in a section of our tree here. Um, and usually I just do one section at a time. This one we're gonna kind of cheat a little bit because this is the only pecan pie on here. And I put my light and then I'm gonna come back with my dark and I'm just gonna kind of put a little bit along the edges here. What we're trying to do is just get, you know, some shading in here, a couple different colors. It just kind of brings it to life. It's not so, so flat. We'll put a little on that side too. And after I've done that dark, then I come back with the light again. And you can see I'm just kind of going over those lines and coloring it in some more, um, just layering that color on there. And it'll just give you some different tones in that tree. And you can just keep layering and layering. So you can see there, there is our tree. Now with the blends, make sure you snap. Do you hear that? The top's back on. Okay, that's how you know they're on there nice and tight. Now with the leaves, and again, because these are pretty small, we're gonna do several at one time. And I'm doing 
the light. Okay, see how we're coloring in with the light. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna just put some dark. And I just tend to go like on one, one side of my image. I am not an artist. Um, those of you that are artists understand more the shading and you know what way is the light coming from and, and all that stuff. Um, you know what? I never understood it. So I just kind of put dark on one side, light on the other. And I feel like as long as I've got those varying colors and different shades in there, I think it looks good. So that's just me. Like I said, we're keeping it simple. Um, not getting all fancy dancy here. So again, light first. Um, now you certainly could do dark first. Some people do that, but this is what works for me. And then we'll put some dark on that left side, come back with the light and just blend right over that. And what that does is makes it so you don't have distinct lines. If you use regular water-based markers like the stamp and write markers and you color, you're gonna get brush marks and you're gonna get lines um, where your Stampin' Blends, which are an alcohol marker, you can see how nice that just blends those colors. Now we'll do the same thing down here. And to keep our video short, I am gonna color and I will speed up this section um, as I do this. So I'll be right back with it all done. Okay, I've colored those two, and I wanna introduce you to the, um, it's called a color lifter. So it's another Stampin' Blend, it's essentially clear. And what this does is it will pick up or fade out some color that you color with the blend. So if you go out of the lines, like there I went out a little bit on the green, if I use this, it'll blend it away. So it works pretty slick. So this is always a handy tool just to have for when you go out of the lines. Now for these, okay, because I'm going to use the brush tip on these because it is a, a bigger, um, a bigger leaf. So we'll just color it. Actually, this brush, these markers need to be replaced. Um, I've had this granny apple green one since these first came out quite a few years ago, and I have used it a lot. Um, but they are not refillable. I get asked that all the time. So sometimes they kind of hit the end of their life and it's, it's time to get new ones. Now for this one, rather than blending that color, I put down the light and then I'm just coming in and I'm doing, you know, these little stripies in there. And we're just going to leave that darker. So here you can really see the two different shades of, um, the same color. These are both granny apple green, but you, now you've got your darker and your lighter. So there, we've got that color. Let's put our tops on. There's that one and that one and that one. And I think we are about ready to stick our card together. So we have a piece of old olive and we're going to just layer. Oh, as I flip this over, you can see Stampin' Blends will bleed through your card stock. So you want to kind of be caught. Um, I guess conscious that you always have a backing behind it. Like I would never color, let's make believe this was white and this was the inside of my card. I would not stamp in color with Stampin' Blends on here because it would bother me that it showed in the back. If you wanted to stamp or color with Stampin' Blends on the inside, put a layer in there because then it's, you're not seeing, you know, the backside where it bled through. So there's that. And then what we're gonna do with our little monkeys here is take that one and we're gonna put him so that he's kind of hanging. We'll just have him hanging from the tree like so. And then this one, we'll put some adhesive on and we're gonna connect their tails. So this one, oh, come on in there. He's gonna be hanging just like so. Isn't that cute? How they're, reminds me of a barrel full of monkeys. Um, and let's just get a greeting on here. And I have um, just a scrap of soft sea foam, and we're gonna go ahead and stamp right along the bottom edge here, just swinging by to say hi. And then I'm gonna take my paper trimmer. Whenever I cut out like a little tiny greeting layer like this, I like to just stamp on the edge of a piece of scrap and then, ooh, that's a great shot there. And then I come in and trim it down. So that way, let's see, let's take just a sliver off the top. Um, 
that way it gets to be just the right size that I need. So there is that. Now for our card, we're gonna go ahead and we will just stick this layer. I'm gonna put it kind of over here towards the right side, like so. And then we can use a couple of dimensionals on our greeting. And we're gonna just pop that up right there, just swinging by to say hi. And there you go. There is your cute little monkey card. Now remember, in the stamp set, there are several other monkeys. You just can't punch those out. So I wanted to really feature the punch along with this one. Now here's a couple other ones. Um, this one's done, you know, very similar. There's the face. I didn't add the ears on there, but I also stamped and punched out the banana. So you have the banana on there as well. So there's that one. And then with this one, I stamped him and I colored him with the Stampin' Blends. So instead of stamping on that colored cardstock, you can see where it's colored with Stampin' Blends. Now I will have pictures of these additional cards on that blog post too, so make sure you check that out. And then the final one, I wanted to show that you could also just punch out your images. And then the, the face is actually a stamp on here as well. Um, so for here, it's not stamped, but I'll be honest, I don't really like him, but I wanted to keep him just to show you that that is an option as well. So there you go. We have four different cards using the punch and the little monkey stamp set. So I hope you enjoyed the tips that I shared today with you with Stampin' Blends and punches and that you like these cards. Make sure to let me know if you have any questions. We're here to help you and we would love to be your Stampin' Up! demonstrator. If you'd like to order these products or any other Stampin' Up! products, just use the link in the video description to go to the website and we appreciate it very much. So we'll be stamping again with you real soon. Have a stamp happy day.